review of the German Bundesliga 2018-2019 campaign. And it has been an exciting match day, you may all have witnessed. And what I think is last match day people are looking forward to, usually. And a lot more people are attending, are watching, are uh, following this. Uh, and there is a good, some good reason for that. Maybe there are actually two. <laughs> because the, the one reason I fancy is paramount is that you can be pretty sure that there will be some goals. And as I uh, try to make sure or try to... Um, get into people's head. <laughs> I mean, we all would be happy about more goals. Anyone arguing against it is actually uh, either trying to justify, uh, well, it's always been like that, and well, and, and he's also somehow justifying, uh, why didn't I say that? Also, I mean, uh, because it's so obvious. And there are so simple means to get these more goals. Um, because this is what I usually say is simply start applying the rules because the application of rules is gen in general directed against the strikers but this is not subject here um, but as we can at least witness now what I think is people more excited about this last match day because simply there have been goals there was a total of 41 goals, which they, they said it was the maximum for the last seven years, but I made some stats uh, about this as well, I may have shown. But there's about half a goal more um, on, on the last match day, uh, usually, and this is not just the German Bundesliga, it's uh, in other leagues too. Uh, which is, and half a goal does not sound that much, I mean this is more than half a goal, because the average is 4.5, and the league average uh, for the whole season had been uh, 3.2 with these goals, I think. I mean, we can, uh, we got plenty of chances to look that up. I don't know which one I'm gonna choose. I should know actually, but, well, it's after the last match day, I may not know. Um, I can just show this here, and we may use this table anyway for some other purposes. But here we, we see that the average is 3.179 or 3.18 goals. And we did have 4.5. Of course, well, a couple of 5 ones, three of them, uh, one eight one. Okay, you can't beat that. And this is just more than. But uh, in the, the long-term stats, um, the ones I made here, were actually uh, Bundesliga 1 and 2 together 10 years, but last two match days. So this means um, there had been just a quarter of a goal extra. This is uh, 2.75 expected, 3.02 score, scored. And you, you can Im imagine somehow that those 2.75 expected are about the, the average that had been, that did occur. Also, I can show that as well here. I mean, not for all the years, but for, to give you one example, because we did have a lot more this season. 2.79 had been last year, and uh, maybe one more. Uh, 2.86 so, or 2.87. So you see at least that um, the goal average had been rising for this uh, year's campaign anyway. To up to 3.18. So the 2.75 could be around the expected or the average of the two leagues and the 3.02 occurred or just a quarter of a goal more but this had been 33rd and 34th match, or fourth match day. We could do the same for the, just the 34th actually. But for now we're happy. We have, we have some more goals and what I what I'm sure of is that people are getting excited about this last match because there are more goals. And as there had been, they all feel pretty well. 
because you say, okay, I'm looking forward to know it, the sport studio, sport show, whatever it is, we see plenty of goats, that's why. But maybe it's just one part of the reason, uh, because the other part is, of course, that you see those final decisions. And in some sense, you can say, which I'm also proposing, I'm not proposing, I'm, I'm uh, maintaining, stating, that um, some more emotions, which would be some kind of positive emotions, which would also somehow um, comprise, uh, let's call it mercy, regretting, or feeling sad for someone, or, yeah, feeling sad, or, um, yeah, you somehow, yeah, you feel with the people, with the players, or with the managers, or with the club, if a big club are going down, and sadly with some, and then somehow, you know, you don't get all these, why did you win today, and why wasn't it, once again, you didn't succeed, and, and so on, so, and then, then instead they would ask, well, it's such a big club, and, so sad and what do you think well we may come back uh, next year or something like that or also Borussia Dortmund who did not win the title but they played well okay you can't say much about this last match as they did play well they won it in Gladbach which was not an easy task so in the end okay I mean now well it's it's all finished and you th simply look back at it and, and you say well no high expectations nothing no disappointments anymore it's just finished and then yeah you start to consider it history and not what are you going to intend what are your intentions for the next game and what do you think how far can you get or do you reach the Champions League well this is now so that's why people also in the interviews they start to relax a bit and even if uh, they know now like Nürnberg and Hanover or Stuttgart they know now where they are another good effort by Stuttgart or in it had been pretty rare, but finding out nil nil they couldn't do they couldn't win much, but at least they performed well. They had been the better side. Now they would say, well, okay, we knew it, and this was what going to it's going to well the best we could hope for, and this is what we got. And now we focus on the next on the on the relegation play playoff, but at least no more silly questions uh, about new coaches or what. <laughs> I mean, sack another coach, and how do you w w want to stop the the endless crisis? Well, <laughs> it is stopped now, as the whole season come to came to a halt, and um, so of course people, everyone around is a bit more positive, but obviously people do like that, <laughs> so obviously they they. You uh, like it a lot more to hear, well, sadly, you went down and how do you feel now and, and so on. And over this, uh, why didn't you once again not take your chances and another loss, five losses in a row or whatever it is. I mean, just silly questions and they do not wish to answer while now they somehow they all are in the same boat. Do you say that in English? Sitting in the same boat. Um, anyway, so this is about last match day, and no, one more thing, of course, things have come to a decision, and people are also somehow, you know, also the supporters are getting tired, so they need a rest. I mean, you can't go every week, uh, you can't go travel to the stadium and so on, and feel for your players, for your club, or hope for better results, and once again get disappointed, or whatever it is, right? You, you can't do that all year, so you, you need a rest. And, and that's also why, I mean, now they, they simply put up with what happened and it's over now, so they are also celebrating their own break they are going to have. Everyone is somehow happy. Also with that, so that's also part of the reason why people are looking forward. But also you would say, well, now it's the last time, now we simply have to watch it. Because it's the last time they're going to play and then, then we, we are on a break for two months or so. Or is it more? It is more. <laughs> Ten weeks or even. Anyway, uh, that's... Uh, uh, okay, okay. So one may um, 
understand that uh, that people are more excited. But I, I think one major reason too is that simply there are more more goats to come, and everyone wants more goats, and they all love it. And if they are one-sided uh, in this distribution uh, as five one or eight one, you still want to see the goats. If you don't mind, I mean, just to go. I mean, if you feel for Nuremberg or Augsburg or uh, do support Frankfurt or something, or Hertha, you may regret it to some extent or be a bit, yeah, I, I wouldn't say so. I mean, they all knew where they were and Frankfurt, even the 5-1, didn't cost them uh, the EuroLeague quality because um, Hoffenheim did not uh, get this uh, winner instead. They conceded two more when it was 2-2. Uh, so and so on. So Frankfurt are also quite happy with that, and um, well, they are all um, different. But I, I think even the uh, Nuremberg uh, supporters would say, "Well, another nice goal. Okay, now we took part. We scored one. Okay, we we celebrate that. And if the others score, we still saw a fine goal. I mean, nothing we can do about relegation anyway. So it is okay to." see some goals. So I'm pretty sure about that. And I think, I hope, well, when you start considering um, and how you feel about it yourself, you who are watching, uh, then maybe you will uh, partly uh, agree uh, on that. And we simply more goals. And four and a half, this is now... <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, is not necessarily the, the the limit that people would take. I mean, in the World Cup, that's one of my famous example. World Cup 1954, that everyone either well didn't live to see or even forgot or didn't even doesn't even check the results or whatever. But there had been five and a half goals per game, and I think that was one of the most exciting. It's not just as Germany won it in the end because I don't mind to who's winning and I, I somehow feel over the years a lot more for Hungary, who simply was a better side. And after you saw so many pictures, and I, I made a video on that as well, uh, also showing some of the of these amazing uh, chances Hungary had in the final. Uh, this So this is not the reason. It's just the reason that you had some very, very exciting games and simply goals all over. That's what I'm sure of. Mm. And that was five and a half, and I'm not even saying that is the limit that people would be ready to take and be happy with. Um, and would cherish or would appreciate and wouldn't mind simply goals coming. I mean, it could mean their team are losing, but if they are losing, you know, even if it's nil three, as we had in Dortmund Hoffenheim, everyone might remember this because it's one of the highlights of the season, maybe. There was three nil Dortmund after 75 minutes. And Hoffenheim almost won, but they uh, scored a 3-3 three, there. Three, so everyone would say, well, even if it's 0-3 and we got plenty of goals, then it's not too late. What they would do now is at 0-2, okay, they start to burn their or opponents' uh, banners or whatever they do, right? Because they know this game is lost, it's 0-2, no way to come back. And so you could be even more behind with a 0-3. And then still think, well, why shouldn't we score three goals? Because it's possible. Which is not possible nowadays. No, I'm not talking about the last match day. So now we can have this, those uh, single reviews. I hope you enjoyed this. Okay, even if it's uh, sidetracking a bit, it's a bit, um, yeah. As I said, I would, I would prefer to talk a lot more about football and publish what I think about the game and how to this game and how to make it more attractive and more just because it's unjust in many in which was witness, to be witnessed all over this uh, year with the VAR because everyone was getting angry. Okay, Hoffenheim were with a brilliant start, scoring two goals, could have been more against Mainz, and then they lost the player with a player by a sending off, which was well, it was uh, everyone considered it just sending off so this was it was <laughs> what they deserved which was still unlucky in that sense it was nil two and from then on a uh, game went uh, mind's way which is very regular for these days but what you can certainly uh, uh, 
what these stats prove here and also the result would prove. Mines hung in, they just tried. And this was what I uh, really um, uh, did support in the preview because I said no one is going to give the least away. In Gladbach Dortmund, uh, as I said, I wanted to be Gladbach. They didn't perform so well. I was expecting Dortmund to be slightly better. They were a lot more better. It was 0.47 goals. Uh, so, um, well, I can't complain, so I was on the wrong side. I still consider, well, if you really wish to know my opinion, which is um, different to what you may have heard uh, so far, but about this one goal, one nil for Dortmund, right uh, to the uh, end of the first half. Because this ball, I mean, it may have touched the line. I'm, I'm really happy if, if, if they would always decide like that. I would be happy because this one was favoring. I mean, here you get the line and the ball was, well, well. if you look from above, you may say, okay, it still did touch the line. I'm happy with that. If they would do so, I mean, with the goals, we do not have the, the discussion anymore, but there had been goals like uh, Frank Lampard England against Germany when the ball crossed the line by this much and they didn't see it, they say. I mean, uh, that's just ridiculous, because in that case, they argued against the goals. They said, oh, I'm not so sure if this ball crossed the line, although it was this far behind. Now, this ball was very close, and they would have called it out uh, plenty of times. And in this case, they didn't, and also the VAR did not intervene. So this was an allowed goal, so against my general um, verdict that uh, all those... Goals are being disallowed by the VAR. But in this case, that was the 1 0 for Dortmund, and Bayern was still 1 0 at that point. So I think they wanted, uh, so everyone who watched this and saw this, also the VAR uh, down in the cellar, what they say, but uh, he was saying, okay, this is Dortmund, so if it's 1 0, then it, when we got at least some excitement for the second half. And so, you, I mean, you can still have plenty of views on that, and you can say, well, they wouldn't, uh, no one would uh, admit that he was uh, somehow happy with a created tension like that. But still, it might be uh, somewhere in the back of his mind, even if he's very neutral, he might still think, okay, why not? I mean, <laughs> okay, this is so close, why not? And the same thing happened in, in Munich when they disallowed the goal, when I would strongly argue this was a very correct goal. It was not just, I mean, the ball was hit from the own half, from the somewhere around the own uh, penalty area, it was long uh, pass. And Gnabry was right at the uh, middle line. So this is where strikers are supposed to be. I mean, because uh, in the own half you wouldn't be offside. He started right when the ball was kicked. Of course he was trying to get his small uh, advantage that you never get. Uh, because then you're offside, either you're offside or you're being brought down as well. But you simply do not uh, score a goal because the defender is as quick as you are. But as we need, pacey, <laughs> the better word. But in this case, I would say Nabri still touched the middle line with the one foot. He maybe with the major parts of his body being in the in the other half already, but it's one foot and touched the line. So now show me the rule which, if you would agree on that, now show me the rule which says you gotta be with all your body in your own half. And if it would be written somewhere, which is not the case. I mean, they say if if you're starting from your own half, uh, you're not offside, but imagine he did touch with his one foot. That was his last uh, body part. He touched the line. So why would he be in the, uh, considered to be in the opposing half? He was still touching the line. And if you write down such rules and you say, well, if you start from your own half, we wouldn't consider you offside because that would be mean. I mean, now you, all of the, the other players can uh, take your goal. And even if you had one striker in the middle halfway line somewhere, and then he's offside. I mean, so you can't score a goal at all. They all have to go back as far as the, the strikers do. So we have the middle, uh, the halfway line as the 
as the mark uh, uh, which you are allowed to well you're not offside as long as you're in your own half which is fine very good but why would you be obliged to have all your body <laughs> so you must do not no no your head your you can't score a goal with your head so don't move your head above <laughs> why would why would they do that i mean i would say like the ball that didn't cross the line as long as one part of your body still touches your own half why wouldn't you be then i mean this is obviously the the line that you want to be the borderline right and so why wouldn't it be enough because you obviously see this striker was not getting an advantage from being too far ahead he was not in the penalty area of the opponent so, but if you wouldn't agree to that, then you could still say they they compare him to the the defender on the outer um, yeah what is it called the outline or the yeah from from the uh, edge of the the pitch, but there was another player in the middle of the, of the pitch and they also in the <coughs> You know, circle somewhere, and this one was uh, going back too. And this one, for me, he was closer to his own goal than the one on the outer line, the edge of the pitch. So why do they compare it with him? And you, you don't, you just see his foot somewhere in the uh, in one camera view, but you, they don't talk about him. But I, I would say this one was closer to his own goal than Napoli anyway. So. I mean, there were plenty of reasons, and the same reason I would say here, well, it's Bayern who scored, and you see Kovac after this decision, because they were all celebrating, they went back into their own half, crowd was so happy because this was the title, I mean, 2-0, and, and they wanted to take the, uh, the kickoff, the uh, Frankfurt players. And then <laughs> the intervention came, no, no, this was offside. I mean, so silly, because... Uh, if people do players do not even think about it uh, the possibility then this would uh, also speak volume somehow right i mean why wouldn't the frank frankfurt defenders uh, at least say well could you check that please they didn't because they they knew this was a goal so this is just ridiculous to check to even check such a goal and if you do so why would you then say he was offside there were two reasons two very good reasons to consider him on site and this is, of course, the negative part of the VAR, because they are so proud of disallowing goals. Anyway, in this case, um, it was partly keeping alive this tension. And what really happened was Frankfurt scored the 1-1. And after this 1-1, it was just one goal away of Dortmund from the title. So they could hardly become ever any closer. So to say, I mean, uh, uh, the nine points, they are always talking about that. And how could you give away that? I mean, with so many games to go and Bayern simply always the better side and always able to beat anyone. And if they do not do so, so they, they talk about this major crisis. But what, what if they win the games? Because this is <laughs> non-crisis. This is regular. Well, if Dortmund lose a game here or there, this is also very regular. They should have lost against Mainz. They should have at least, well, against this law, it was well possible too. They at least, uh, uh, so they, they could have lost points in the other games as well. And and Favre was the only one to, um, well, he said we, we, we pushed our our luck to the limits in the, f in the first half of the season, which is very right. I mean, so he seems to understand. I mean... Here you easily take that luck, all that luck that you turn games around and against Augsburg 4-3 and they were even a goal behind or what was it, I don't know, but, but they won the game with the last kick and they won here and they won there and always by a narrow margin and always with not being, by not being the better side really, sometimes. And, uh, and if they drop some points here or there and still even had been a bit lucky, as I could prove with the other table. So in the end... They can be very happy and very proud. <coughs> <coughs> and they were at this one point, after 55 minutes or so, <coughs> they were just one Frankfurt goal away from the title. So how could you come closer? 
Of course it was. Frankfurt in <coughs> Munich, so still a very hard time. But still, if it's just a single goal, you'd say anything can happen. Bayern instantly scored the second, which was obviously very well deserved. <coughs> but you can't blame Frankfurt for anything, because, I mean, if we could take that controversial goal in here, then the stats would just be confirmed, more or less, right? Even here, Frankfurt with a small edge, but you could say, well, okay. <coughs> so Frankfurt did play their, their game once again pretty well. Frankfurt, uh, Bayern were the better side. They deserved to score. They deserved to win everything for you with that one. In Gladbach Dortmund, I was talking about this one already. Hertha Leverkusen, even a smaller edge than expected. And I, I, I was trying to really figure out if Hertha were playing regularly. And they did. The only thing, and this was also in the preview when I, when I mentioned, mentioned that, that they do, are not ready to tackle badly, to foul or to in, injure themselves or the others. And so if you allow those very good players to play football, they simply are able to score goals a lot more. And this is one of these examples when I say, well, what, is, what, is, uh, what harm is done? Uh, here they did it uh, on their own free will, <laughs> so to say, that they didn't tackle badly. But if you would make the rules as such that uh, a foul is considered um, disobeying the rules, so you did not uh, obey the rules, but you've got to stick to the rules to make a play, a game, any game uh, playable. So the punishment needs to be such that this foul would not be repeated. I mean, as for example, just to give you one example in basketball, you would say, okay, you are allowed to, I mean, you can touch his arm, whatever, when he's, but this is a foul, okay? It counts, the others keep the ball, they get a throw in, which is meaningless, but they score enough goals anyway, so this is not a better opportunity. But this one foul is counted. So if it's five and you're a good player, or there are many good players, of course, but you're, you're fouled out, you can't do it again, so you can't even play again. So this is a very fair um, uh, treatment of that. So the player would say, I mean, nothing wrong with some, at some point, I mean, committing a foul, but it's just counted, so I'm, I'm <laughs> they won't forget it. I, I mean, it counts, and it counts against me, it counts against my team, so simple as that. And if it would be such, then, all the teams would do what Hertha did here, and of course Leverkusen did the same, but Hertha did have the chances, not as many, but also in Leverkusen not these many, but they would have the better chances to score from these fewer opportunities maybe, or from the same amount of... Because they are not tackled in this moment when they take a shot. They are not taken down or something like that. Anyway, this was a somehow, I mean, good game, but actually the stats would say, well, you shouldn't have these many goals. But as explained, the chances were of a bigger size. In Werder Leipzig, you simply have to say Werder got very lucky. I mean, they are all happy because Leipzig, they did perform well. They rested some players, as I predicted. They still played well. Pizarro scored his 190, I don't know how many goals he scored, but it's a lot. And he scored a goal. He was brought on. He extended his contract to play still when he's 42, which may be the oldest player ever in the Bundesliga. Ooh. Klaus Fichtel was 42, I, I think, but he might be even older then. But um, they were just lucky, still lucky, and RB are still happy because they have this second place, uh, uh, third place, sorry, uh, firmly, and they also play the cup final next week, so everything fine with that result. It didn't do any harm to the table as Werder still could not uh, take over um, Wolfsburg, for example, which was, uh, well, who else? Yeah, they just could have called Wolfsburg if they would have lost. So, uh, or a draw? Draw 53 plus nine. Well, yeah, they have these five goals extra, or these eight goals. So a draw, if, draw here and Werder win and Werder would have been past Wolfsburg um, to uh, get into the Euro League. They are still happy. 
Augsburg, no, no, not much harm done. Anyway, lucky win. Here, uh, Schalke once again didn't perform well, and as I predicted, Stuttgart, even if resting one or two players, or even four, I don't mind, but they, they will start, try to perform. That's what they did. And they are not going to give up and, and then say, OK, 5-0, doesn't matter. We, we're going to win our uh, relegation playoff on Thursday. So they, they did perform. They did perform well. They won a point. They may have even won the game. About Bayern, I was talking uh, uh, already. I was talking about already. Augsburg, Wolfsburg did have some more chances. Augsburg a little less. Here, as in uh, Hertha, Leverkusen, I was, I was trying to figure out if Augsburg were at least trying. And my impression was they did. I mean, of course, at some point you can't stop it anymore and they, they conceded some goals. But they always tried to score a goal, which they managed somewhere. And the defending was like Hertha's. I mean, they just uh, did not tackle badly. They did not foul the player. Uh, so that's what happens then. Still, if there are more chances, you can say, well, okay, did they perform well? Did they perform well enough? This is 0.81 goals. It's not that massive, which you haven't seen all, uh, all season or so. So something that can happen anyway. I was also arguing slightly in, these, uh, in such games in favor of the home sides when I said, well, if you're in doubt, home side are going to do it. Here you can say uh, uh, Düsseldorf did get lucky again because Hannover made a very good effort, which is also part of my prediction. It was just, if anything, I mean Hannover or Nürnberg, they are all going to try. They play their regular kind of game. They are not going to uh, give up, hang their heads or, yeah, or yeah, whatever it is. Hannover played well. They were unlucky, partly, if still there's a small edge to Düsseldorf. Well, why shouldn't they win then? Still, uh, Hannover somehow deserved the draw. And same here, Freiburg had been the better side. They had been about as much better as expected. So why would we ex uh, complain about a win as uh, in the game aforementioned uh, Wolfsburg, Augsburg or uh, Hertha Leverkusen? The defending from Nuremberg was not on the regular uh, season standard. They do not fall. They are not ready to get pick up injuries or even to injure the other players, which is also part of what I started when I introduced the video and I said people uh, appreciate that. So if they liked this match day, it is because you do not see so many bad tackles, injuries and interruptions and whatever it is. So now uh, I was talking about the games. As we see here, it was, was a good one. We, I, I could check that later. Here, here I was pretty massively uh, arguing in favor of Hertha. The stats would not say I was wrong, would rather say I'm right. If you say, well, if you defend like that, you can't do much. Uh, so I was wrong here. I was wrong here in some sense to a certain extent, but here I would say the stats would very much uh, favor my point of, point of view because Leipzig just did perform well, so market was wrong in that sense, uh, right in the other sense. Here I was doing okay, here I was doing okay. Wolfsburg was another one when I didn't, I can hardly argue. Here I was, I, I mean, I was wrong, okay, go ahead. Here I can't say much, but I was good enough with this one to win too. So I think we're about even, or market once again with a small win, maybe. Yeah, very small win. For market, which I would happily uh, take, uh, especially in view of those stats that would still say you had been doing okay. I mean, you've been doing okay in your assessments or yeah, in general. And uh, the, this last match day could be a lot more painful. So we finish this season um, with a minus of one five five one. I will just uh, quickly remind you once again that uh, just one match day of going <laughs> my way uh, would do to um, catch up here. I'm still more or less down the, the first match day when I was introducing this system, but I'm, I'm not saying not anything. I mean, it's just, this is more or less even if you say, okay, you, you have not been doing well, 
I will happily uh, accept that uh, view as well, uh, which I simply have to. But minus 1551 is not a, such an amazing guard as I was trying to point out here. And that there could be one match day. I mean, this was this one. If you take this off, it's almost even. But no arguing about it. Market done okay. <clears throat> I think I complained so much. But the whole season was very uh, tough in the Bundesliga anyway, from the betting point of view. Uh, but but not for the uh, for the assessment, just for the way the way games went. And uh, I mean, comparing to uh, former years. Um, uh, when you simply simply when you didn't do well, you could say, "Well, I've been unlucky," or you said, "Well, maybe I've done something wrong." But nowadays, I can measure it, and uh, in general, I could say, "Well, I didn't uh, make any money, so to say." <coughs> but the, the the quality of my proposals had been pretty good, so it was just unlucky, more or less. That's what my stats would say. Anyway, I can measure that these days. Well, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see what I'll do next season. And I may be back with some other videos, with some other contents too. And hope you enjoyed it. Hope you take something from it. And see you soon. Share, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> and whichever all.